Hey, what is going on guys? So, do you ever feel like there's just no point to reading productivity and self-improvement articles? I mean, you pull it up, you read it or scan through it, you get vaguely motivated for 10 minutes or so, but after that, it really does nothing to change your life. And all these articles, even though they purport to be really, really helpful, don't actually seem to be helping. Well, that's what I wanna talk about today. I wanna to talk about how to actually use the productivity tips and the self-improvement advice that you read. And to start out, I wanna share one of my favorite quotes in the world, which comes from Derek Sivers, who is a writer and who is also the guy who founded CDBaby.com and subsequently sold it for millions of dollars about 20 years ago. The quote goes like this, if more information was the answer, then we'd all be billionaires with perfect abs. And I think that today, this quote is more poignant than it has ever been, because we now have unprecedented access to information and more specifically self-improvement advice. 50 years ago, people probably had the odd copy of how to win friends and influence people sitting on their bookshelves, but now in less than 30 seconds, you can bombard your eyes with more productivity tips and life hacks than you can handle. And literally right now, someone's probably publishing another one of those articles about 47 habits that will make 2019 your best year ever. Oh, and don't forget that number 18 will literally blow your mind. But again, if you're like most people, you probably scan through that article and then proceed to do absolutely nothing with it. I remember a time back in college when a teacher of mine was lamenting a very similar problem in one of my classes. He said, if I have 100 students in this room, probably only 75 are actually going to pay attention to what I'm saying. And of those 75 people, probably 20 of them will remember what I said after the test is over. And of that group, maybe one or two will actually apply it over the long term. The fact of the matter is very few people actually use the information that they intake. And the problem is exacerbated on the internet because there's just so much of it going around. There's so much to take in and you can feel absolutely overwhelmed when you read these kinds of articles or watch these kinds of videos. So that begs the question, how do you make sure that you are among that group of one or two people who actually applies the information and makes meaningful improvements in your life? Well, today I wanna share a process that can help you do that. So here's how to actually use the productivity tips that you find on channels like mine or anywhere else on the internet. Step number one, find the one problem or goal that you want to solve above all others and prioritize it. As the author Greg McCohen talks about in his excellent book, Essentialism, a true priority is singular. You need to make a decision here. And note that decision originally comes from a Latin word meaning to cut off. You need to pick one path right now and cut off the others. Now, note that this isn't a permanent choice. You can change your priorities later. And it also doesn't mean that you can't be working on more than one thing at once. But to make notable progress quickly, you wanna know ahead of time which one is most important. Otherwise, you're gonna run into that all too common part of the day where you have very little time or energy left over, but you still have to read and meditate and exercise oh, and practice guitar as well. And then you don't really know which one to cut. So by setting a priority and by knowing the answer to that question of which one is most important beforehand, you're gonna save yourself a lot of time and a lot of dead ends. All right, so once you've decided on your priority, it's now time to go out and try to find resources or tutorials and guides that can help you make that goal a reality. And if you're a beginner, it could be a really good idea to go out and find somebody else's tutorial or someone else's tips and follow them exactly. But if they don't work, then you don't wanna reject them outright. Instead, you wanna distill down their basic concepts and then try to use those concepts in a way that works for you to adapt them. So for example, let's say that I tell you that I get up every morning really early and I read for an hour. And you wanna do the same, but you have class or work really early in the morning and you just can't make that work with your sleep schedule. Well, realize that the point here is that I'm carving out a specific time in the day where no one can interrupt me, where I can actually make that reading happen, not that I'm doing it in the morning. So how could you work with your own schedule and your own constraints to gain that same benefit? Maybe instead of in the morning, you read after lunch or after school. The specific way that I'm implementing the technique often isn't the point. So you need to look a little bit deeper and find the logic behind why I'm doing what I'm doing and then adapt it to your own specific situation. Case in point, the third step in my process has a specific prescribed number in it because I think a really great way to build a habit to actually put a productivity technique into action is to do a 30 day challenge around it. To do this, you wanna find a way to break your goal down into measurable steps and then take at least one of those steps every single day for 30 days. And while you do this, you also wanna keep track of your progress on a calendar or a habit tracking app or whatever else works for you. I've had some great results doing challenges like this. For one, on Instagram last year, I did a challenge 
called CIG 30 day, where I made sure to do some intense exercise every single day for 30 days and put it on Instagram. And doing that helped me get back into the habit of doing intense exercise on a daily basis, which I'd kind of fallen out of at the time. And for another example that actually tweaks the concept a little bit, a couple of years ago, I gave myself a three month reading challenge where every day for three months, I had to read 25 pages of a nonfiction book. I could not fail, otherwise I'd have to pay my best friend Martin $100. And I didn't. And it also helped me to build a really strong reading habit going forward. Now, I do wanna give you a couple of tips for doing this successfully. First, it can be a really good idea to decide beforehand what part of the day you're going to practice your habit or take the steps you decided to take. When you decide beforehand, when you make a plan, like I'm gonna do it in the morning or I'm gonna do it before bed, then you often find that your motivation to do it is a lot higher. There's a concrete plan up in your head. Secondly, at least in the beginning, make your steps small and input-based, meaning that they can be accomplished with just an input of time or effort instead of a specific outcome. So for example, if your goal is to write a novel, then a beginning step that's probably gonna be pretty difficult to accomplish each day is write an entire chapter. But something that's definitely doable is write 100 words or even 500 words. That brings us to the fourth step in the process, which is this. Don't wait for the perfect time to start. Instead just get started now. Even if there's a constraint, just start now. Realize that the time at which you get the idea or the motivation to do something is the time where you're gonna be the most excited to get started. So even if you're going on vacation in two days from now or you have a bunch of homework to do, if you can carve out the time to do those beginning steps, then start right now. Take advantage of that initial motivation and the novelty factor that you're experiencing in the moment. Also, right at the beginning, find a way to keep yourself accountable. Again, you can mark things off on a calendar, you can use a habit tracking app, or you can even keep a journal. And if you need an extra push, it can be a really good idea to ask somebody who cares about you, maybe a friend or your parents, or even a teacher to be an accountability partner, to at least review your entries or ask you from time to time how you're doing. Finally, have a way to review your progress yourself. And remember, the 30-day challenge or any similar commitment device isn't the goal in itself. It's just a device to help you build the habits and actually make progress. But there should be a larger overarching goal, something that you want to eventually achieve. So at regular intervals, sit down and review your progress. Ask yourself, is doing what I'm doing now, even if it's been working really well for 30 days, is it actually getting me any closer to my goal? If I've been writing 500 words a day, do these 500 words even matter? Do I need to shift gears now and actually start editing what I've written down, or should I keep forging ahead? And even if things are going well, you should still continue to write down your progress at regular intervals, because by doing this, you're going to get a record of your successes, which can help to motivate you on any particularly difficult days in the future or on the next time you read a productivity tips article that makes you want to switch gears and go do something entirely different. And by successfully avoiding that temptation and keeping your motivation levels high through these reviews, you will continue to actually make progress on your goals. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, one of the methods that I've used to actually spur action is the 30 day challenge. Things like my 30 day exercise challenge or my reading challenge. These types of challenges are a great way to get started on something, to stay motivated and to see significant progress in a relatively short amount of time. And if you wanna learn how to set yourself up for success with this particular type of challenge, then you might wanna go watch through Rich Armstrong's course on Skillshare called the Perfect 100 Day Project. In it, he teaches you how to intelligently pick the right challenge, how to structure it, and how to give yourself the best chance of sticking with it the entire time. Plus, since Rich's course is on Skillshare, taking it means you'll also have access to more than 28,000 other courses, many of which can help you make progress on your individual goals. If you're trying to improve your web development skills, there's a course for that. If you wanna learn how to make great YouTube videos, there are courses for that too. And if you just wanna learn how to get organized and stay on top of things, well, I made a course for you all about that, which has already been taken by almost 20 thousand people. A premium membership on Skillshare gets you unlimited access to that entire library of courses, and it's really affordable as well, as their annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. And if you'd like to give it a try first, you can use the link in the description down below to get a two-month unlimited trial for free. Big thanks goes out to Skillshare, as always, for sponsoring this video and being a big supporter of my channel, and thank you for watching as well. Hopefully this video in particular was helpful. Hopefully it helps you to cut through all the clutter and actually start making some progress. And if you enjoyed it, definitely hit that like button and get subscribed right there so you don't miss out on future videos when they come out. You can also click right there to get a free copy of my book on how to earn better grades and also join my weekly newsletter or click right over here to get one more video on this channel. Last but not least, if you wanna to listen to our latest podcast episode, you can check that out right over here. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.